Wow, everybody, we um, got speaking to this gentleman here, whose name is George, by the way. We got speaking to him uh, basically through Facebook a few weeks ago, and he invited us down to uh, his family business. And um, I'm just going to let George jump in, explain a little bit about the business, where we are, how it started, and what exactly it is you do. And I can assure you, we have the footage to uh, show you what I would consider one of the most impressive yards of machinery that we've come across in a long time. Over to you, George. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no, well, we started, my dad started off in business about 40 years ago. Um, him, my mum, started out just selling um, ride on mowers, push bikes, older tractors, um, just going along to auctions and selling them off to um, whoever he could find. Um, we were brought up alongside it all our lives. Um, I'm being the eldest and three below me, Henry on sales. I do the main the purchasing and underwrites for the tractors and machinery today. Um, we have the brother Edward, he is uh, the yard man or keeps it all ship shape, organising transport for all the export loading and everything else like that. Um, Toby, he is uh, all driving lorry, he's organising parts, running the workshop, so we really pull together as a, as a team. Um, so mum and dad started out with no staff, literally running from home out of our family garage at the time. Um, and dad's policy was always to buy what he could afford, one tractor, then two, and then three. Um, in 2006, um, I came, left college after doing engineering and come to work with my dad. Um, at the time, he was, had no internet skills or anything like that. So I bring on the website, started export. Um, Henry then came along and gave me a hand and then Edward and then Toby and then we've just gone along um, really trading off the back of my dad's reputation which has brought us to where we are today really. Well can I just uh, ask a question for the viewers um, on what sort of uh, scale would you describe your business today I mean there's tractors everywhere. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You know, um, it, it's it's really down to just passion. We just we just just keep going on and on. Um, you know, just coming to work, loving it every day. Um, and with all of us pulling together, we can get get the work done. We've always all, we've all got a good work ethic. Um, What's all in your yard today? What have you got here to sell? Roughly, if you, you were if you were been asked to describe what you've got out there to sell the people. Give um, us a... Really, we trade it as tractors and plants. So really, it says it all in the words, tractors and plant diggers. And we do anything still from law. We still do the lawn mowers that we started out of many years ago. We sell them, quad bikes, RTVs, tractors, compact tractors, tally handlers. Um, literally anything, we take anything as a part exchange. Um, as you can see from walking around, we've got a bit of a licorice all sorts, really. Um, What's your favourite? to work with or do you have a favourite? Oh, I'm more a tractor and telehandler man, Henry would be more the plant man, um, although he has sell anything, um, I've always been more into the tractors, um, I'm really not fussy, I like the old stuff, I like the new stuff, I still love a good classic to be fair um, and I, I love the new stuff as well which obviously you can see is what, what we're, we're trading a lot in but obviously we've got a lot of things that cater for different people. But that's something uh... Gary James and I noticed when we were walking about earlier on, it's not one type of tractor, you know, it's not a niche market where you have low R tractors or just high R tractors. You seem to have everything. Yeah, that's right. Um, the, there's a constant change in market and we like to, we like to be in all the markets. So if one, if the top end tractors are quiet, we can offer the higher, there's a, there's a job for a market, export market for higher hours stuff. Um, so, if the, if the exchange rate's wrong, we can't be exporting, we've got the cheaper tractor for the UK market or, or, or wherever else in the world it might be, really. So it gives us a lot bigger, wider spectrum of customers, really. And we've arrived in here today, and just a snapshot of your life. We have seen a 20-ton digger being loaded on yep. to a lovely uh, R650 manual. That's right, <laughs> that's right. That's one of our transport guys, lorries, yeah. Um, Where's that going? And that's going to Saudi Arabia, so that'll be dropped at the port tomorrow. <laughs> and we've also seen, now this one's hard for me to get into my head, but we've also seen two fence being loaded onto a lorry. Yeah, they're going, they're going to the Netherlands. They're going to the yeah. Netherlands, beside where they're made. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we've also seen two containers yeah. um, 
on one of the containers was getting loaded up with a, was it like a case? Case wheel digger. Case wheel digger. Yeah. We also seen you changing wheels around in another digger, um, which was funny. And it's going, it was getting loaded then as well today. It was meant to get loaded today. It was going, I, I don't know where all this stuff, it's crazy. And then you've tractor sold out there. You told me that need picked up tomorrow to go off to Scotland and to go off all different sorts yeah, of places. It's just mental. That's right, yeah. It's a bit of a hectic lifestyle. There's stuff moving all over the place. We've got a real, um, the logistics seem to work well. We've got three Arctics of our own and we're just constantly picking up, dropping off, drop, pick, dropping to ports. Um, and that seems to work really well with the, obviously the collection of new stock coming in. So we keep the lorries busy and we use a lot of outside transport. Um, and obviously we can arrange a shipping worldwide for all customers. Yeah. Now your own lorries are, are not just average lorries. That's right. <laughs> are, are you passionate about the lorries? I am, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a lorry man. I, I drive the R730 myself um, and we've got a drive on the R650 and the R560 is uh, my original baby and that's my younger brother drives that one now. But look at this lorry. Yes, he's the- That's the boss man. That's right, that's the boss, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> This is one of the cleanest examples of uh, 143 uh, restored that I think I have came across. There's a lot of pride in that lorry. That's right, there is. It was a lorry um, we always loved as kids. We, we, could never afford, we could never afford one at the time of when they were in their prime, really. So when we, couldn't, we had to settle for older lorries at the time, but we, we thought one day we will get one. And, uh, we, we found this one, was the, which was the right sort of spec to match what we've already got. So uh, we put a bit of love into her and, uh, and put it where she is today. And it's an absolute credit to you. No, thank you. But I think for the lorry enthusiast, uh, and th the, the lorry enthusiast that 143-450 is going to float his boat. But for the tractor enthusiast... Yeah, that's right, yeah. What is that behind you? Yeah, that's that 1184-40. Um, one of only two, that is the only survivor. The other one ended up in a fire in the Falklands and has been pushed into a seabed. Um, this one behind me, Toby, my youngest brother, and Alan, our guy in the workshop, um, restored over a year period of evenings and, um, and weekends um, to put her where she is today, really. She's only a genuine 2,200 hours from you. So, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a bit of a peach. And none of these two are for sale. Not for sale, no. <laughs> <laughs> everything else is. <laughs> they tell me there's a price in everything, but not these That's two. That's right, not things. these two, no. Well, where do you see yourselves in a, in a few years' time? Can you get bigger? Because it doesn't look like you can get much bigger. No, as you can see, as you come in, we've, um, we've recently purchased the site next door, another acre and a half, to give us a little bit more expansion, um, which I don't think is going to take too long to fill, to be fair. Um, uh, we've always run on we like the, i look at it as a football pitch there's one of us in each corner to run the business and i think if we let it go beyond that it, you know it doesn't become a family business we're 100 percent a family run and, and owned and operated business with real close staff that are loyal to us and and it works really well both ways um we're always pushing we're you know we, we always we always want to do more um uh, you know we've got there's about 400 machines in stock in the yard tonight from what you can see um, 150 of them will be tractors. Um, so there, to be honest, we're, we've got a backlog. We, we can't physically wash, picture, produce or deliver any more at this current time. But, um, you know, we just keep going as we are and we're constantly trying to make improvements to make it more efficient. I just want to ask you a couple of snap questions here. And I'm going to ask you just read. So scariest tractor you've ever bought? N1050. You've bought a, uh, you, sorry, you've bought a what? Fent 1050. Okay. That's scary. Yes, <laughs> it was at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there, so you must have sold yeah, it. She sold, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's away. Scary in what sense? Just sheer oh, volume of cost? Or? Yeah, the most expensive tractor I've bought. At the time, it was newly released, so it was a bit of an unknown beast at the time. Thought, one I thought was a bit of a chance there. Uh, um, obviously a great advertising thing for our business um, to show what we do there's no you know we do anything from the from the bottom from a t20 to a 1050 um, yeah lovely to have it in the yard it, we, we, even better when it was sold <laughs> what's outside of the, the the county which i'm gathering is an absolute uh, uh, special tractor to you yeah what's your favorite old school tractor uh, 
Massey 390T, 12B12, Ford 7810 probably. Um, yeah, I do like a classic to be fair. And there are a few, of, there are a f there, there is a Ford 7810 here, there yeah, is there also is. Uh, a few Masseys that's right. about, yeah, that, few that Masseys. are for sale, but you would be very easily talking about Yeah, that's them. right, exactly, <laughs> it wouldn't take much, that's right. The um, favourite lorry? Um, the favourite lorries are R560, um, we've had a f first new lorry we ever bought, um, really a, f a real flag at the time, we were probably, people thought we sold older tractors and weren't really um, players in the job and sort of put our business on the map really. 2009, the recession hit, but it really, we, we really fast forwarded in, in, those, in those tough years. And even though your R730 and your R650 are, I suppose, next gen That's right. yeah. you still have yeah, I still like the old, I, I love the new lorries, they're cracking bits of kit to use and make the job easy, but they're, there's something about that old school and uh, yeah, she, she's still the one in my eyes. Strangest machine you've sold over the years? Um, we had a, a tracked crane here not so long ago. That was a bit of a unique beast. Um, uh, she's weighed in at 40 tonne. That was uh, one that Henry bought um, off, a, off a local job. Um, we get some weird and wonderful machines really, some really odd, odd machines. And to be fair, sometimes we like something a bit different. You'll see there's a few um, forestry vultures with cranes on. Um, uh, you know, it's a few specialist you know, things for the right job. We, we like something a bit different that no one else has really sometimes. And you work with very loyal customers as well. So you, you, you do a lot of uh, underwriting with That's right, yeah. Is that correct? So yeah, we, un so we underwrite all over the UK um, with main dealers. So if you part exchange a tractor, we give them a price um, to take it in and we stand by that price. And, uh, and that's where a lot of these tractors come from that you see today. Um, so we're very fortunate. We've got some real loyal customers we work with and um, yeah, it makes the job very enjoyable. Wow. Well, look, George, uh, on behalf of Grassmen, thank you very much no, for inviting you. us here. We've had a blast taking a look around. We could stay here all day, but we're going to actually have to go and find a hotel now <laughs> and, and relax for the evening. But thank you very much no, thank you. to you and your family. And as I say, you know, the footage of the yard will speak for itself. And uh, we, hope you, we hope everybody enjoys this video. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, remember uh, to hit the subscribe button and uh, leave any comments or any questions you have about it and we'll do our best to get back to you. And remember to check out the Grassman channel for lots more videos and many more just like this.